It is afternoon tea. That's right. We are here for a second tea. This is right. 2023 is completely different. We're doing three shows in one day. That's right. So today I have from Kenya, Regina Ritidi. I think I'm saying it right. I hope I'm saying it right. I'll get her to say it when she comes into the studio. So we're just going to jump into the disclaimer really quickly. Then we're going to do a quick bio and we're going to have some good old sweet tea with the TEA. And we're going to learn some incredible information about the Upanda, Upanda, Upando United Foundation. There we go. My tongue is just a twisting out already. We're going to get it out there and we're going to get some children's empowerment. That's right. We're going to do children. So let's get rolling. So disclaimer for Miss Liz's Tea Times live show. Miss Liz myself is going live using StreamYard. Before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com. Please be advised that the content brought forward for any Tea Time show hosted by myself, Miss Liz, is always brought forward in good faith. However, it may bring forth dialogue and opinions that are not representative of my platform. The facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the given time of airing. All Tea Time guests and audience participation are responsible for using their good judgment in taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward may include discussions for some where they may be emotionally at risk. It is significant to know that this show is engaging in discussion forms only to offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutic advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Miss Liz, through my email at bookiemissliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in today's show in any aspect, I myself, Miss Liz, welcomes you. And should you decide that this show is not made for you at this time, I respect that and I will see you at a later time date and a later show in the future. Now we got the disclaimer all out of there and we're going to just pop up the incredible website so you can see where you can find out all this incredible information about today's guest. And I'm going to just do a little quick intro for Regina, the CEO and founder of the Upanda United Foundation. And I hope I'm saying it right, Upanda, Upanda. I think she's going to tell me how to say it when she gets in here. Regina Rihidi. Panda, president and founder, was born and raised in Nakuwara, I hope I'm saying it right, Kenya. Regina has been proud Delawalian Del for the last 20 years and is a passionate advocate for children's empowerment. Growing up in Kenya, Rift Valley in the 80s and 90s exposed Regina to life-changing experiences, having witnessed the horror of political violence as her hometown, Nak. Rico, Rico, I hope I'm saying it right, I don't think I am, was hard hit while incidents of the serious political violence have reduced. Previously impacted areas continue to experience lingering effects and security and economy uncertainties. Over the last 18 years, juggling roles as a student and a single parent, Regina has direct, directly supported over 145 orphans 
by paying for their education and sponsoring their basic needs, as well as those of their immediate family members. Through Virginia's leadership, Upanda is supporting 145 orphans on a full-time basis with a goal to expand their outreach to 500 children by the end of 2025. And we can make that happen if we all join together today. Virginia is a passionate about empowering children through education and imparting inco income generating skills. While her efforts are currently focused on making a difference in Nakuada, Kenya, her goal is to extend the outreach to other parts of the country. And I'm going to get her to say that country, the name of that country in Kenya, because I think I'm saying it wrong. So let's get the incredible Regina in the studio so we can spill some tea this afternoon. Welcome, Regina. And I and I I know I'm not saying it right, so I'll get you to say it for me. So that's okay. <laughs> it's okay. So how how do you how do you pronounce the the na, so, Naku, Nakuru Nakuru Kenya Nakuru Kenya Nakuru Kenya? So I gotta learn. I gotta learn some language, and we're gonna talk about language as well today. Yes, yes. Because that's part of what you do as well is teach the language, right? Correct, correct. So, Regina, could you share with the listening audience and viewers out there a little bit about what I haven't mentioned about yourself? Yes, uh, my, my name is Regina Riti, and i um, originally from Kenya. I came to U.S. 20 years ago. Um, 20 years ago, um, in 2007, my sister called me, and she said there were tribal clashes in Nakuru. Could I assist uh, the orphans in Nakuru? And so that started my journey of supporting orphans and vulnerable children. Uh, Upendo is a Swahili word that means love. And so our goal is to fulfill humanity's greatest commandment of loving one another using our core values of love, serve, give, and connect. And that's what I have here on the paper. So I did my homework really good. So you did. <laughs> so I want to learn a little bit today on how to say tea time in Swati. So do you, do you know how to say it in in that language? Yeah, tea tea time. Tea, tea time. It's uh, chai. 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 Wakati. Oh, wakati. Wachai. Wachai. I, I wakati, see. I like it. Wachai. So tea means chai in Swahili. See, and it's very easy to learn a new language if you just try, right? And that's yes. what we're here for, is to show that we can try and we can educate by learning and asking questions. So what got you into the children's empowerment and supporting 145 orphans? So it was, um, so like I said, I came here 20 years ago, but in 2020, COVID hit. Once COVID hit, I was wondering, um, my background, uh, I'm a Christian, um, and I was wondering, asking God, what else do you want me to do? So it was, I believe it was in March 2020, I started asking that question and meditating and asking. Every day I would see the news of 3,000 people dying. I knew I did not want to die at that point because I didn't feel it had fulfilled my goal or my calling here. So I started asking God. And so on May 7, 2020, I had a dream. The dream to me is, uh, it came as a vision. So I could see what I needed to do. So I needed to start um, a library so that I can teach, uh, kids can start learning from an early stage. As we speak today, we've upcycled a shipping container where we are, we are having, uh, we have books, we've shipped over 5,000 books, and also we have 15 computers that were donated. And so we are teaching from there. It's our resource center. Uh, the other thing that was in my vision is greenhouse. So we'll grow food to feed the children and also to sell. And that includes vegetable fruits and herbs. As we speak, we have one greenhouse where we are growing this. Uh, we hope uh, as we expand, we have the three greenhouses that I had on my vision. The third thing that was on my vision was a trade school. And so the message on the trade school was to impart career and life skills to the children. And one of the other things that I could see uh, or I was on my vision is a lot of kids were struggling to get education in Kenya. And those who got education 
did not have employment. But by teaching them life skills and career skills through our technical school, we'll be able to create employment. So part of those skills involve agriculture. Uh, and I repeat, farming. So agriculture, including the animal rearing. As we speak, um, we have three kinds of animals. So we have rabbits, and the rabbits, we're using the rabbit uh, to collect urine. That urine is a fertilizer and also insecticide that we are using to grow in our organic farm. We also have goats. The goats, we, the goal is to feed the children with the milk, but the waste product goes back into farming. The last thing that we have is chicken. So we feed the children with the eggs, but the eggshell and the waste product go back again into farming. Um, that was the third, the, the third project. Uh, and I think I mixed them. The, the, like, the farming portion is it, we have animals and we also have the, the vegetable. So that's two. And the fourth one was the trade school. So the trade school will, will have courses that we can teach. Um, I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I think I got them mixed. So there was uh, the, there was a green, I'm going to repeat. The first one was the um, the library. So we have library and a resource center. And the goal is to have access of books from an early stages. Up to now, we have over 5,000 books in the library. We have 15 computers and we have Wi-Fi where people can be able to access online. We also have a greenhouse. So we have one greenhouse, but in my vision, there were three greenhouses. So right now we have one with the hope of expanding that to more so that we can have enough for the children, enough to export. The fourth, the third project was the trade school. So the trade school will be breaking the ground in a few, literally like in March, 2023. And the trade school would have three levels. So the three levels being the first level, which is the foundation that will focus on 2023, will be a multi-purpose hall where we can uh, do mentorship uh, training and also a community hall where kids can be able to come and be innovative. The second floor will have five classes for electrical, plumbing, uh, mechanical. And the third floor too will have five classes. So, But we are focusing on the first floor first due to the budget. The fourth thing that was in my vision <laughs> was uh, buying additional land. So well, I programmed that so that we'd be able to have more land to impact, you know, to have all this program. But the fifth one is the outreach program. And that, way, that one is focused mostly here in the US. So one of the things that I'm doing and I can show later, right now in my kitchen, I have about five barrels of items that have been donated. That includes books, diapers, uh, feminine pads, clothes, and all that needs to be shipped in Kenya. So that's through the outreach program here in the U.S. I uh, also envision um, from the from the, my, my dream that we'll have children here that will go to Kenya for service trips. And when they go, they can serve the orphans that we are serving. Uh, other than that, um, on, our, on our project, the last portion of it is being able to um, buy a vehicle. And so that vehicle will help us in being able to not just save the children that we have, but go outside the community and reach out to more orphans. So that's how my vision was. So we've completed three projects so far, which is the library and resource center, the greenhouse, the livestock. And the outreach will be ongoing because it's people who are in US that are donating the clothes and the shoes and the feminine parts that we are supporting the orphans. So we are starting the fourth one, the trade school, which is the major, major project. Uh, but I'm excited about it. Well, it, it's truly incredible what you've done. Like the mission has started and you've already got three out of five. And that's what I wanted to talk to you was all the different projects that you have and you've mentioned all of them yes. but just having that the animals and then using that as the garden and, and you know like a, a lot of people will just say well i buy buying chicken just eat the eggs and but you're actually taking the shells and turning it into the 
you know, the fertilizer and all of that. And the rabbits, that, that's really interesting to learn that as well. So for the listeners uh, and then viewers out there that are ch checking this tea time out this afternoon, like we're going to learn some educational stuff during this tea time. I feel it. And some really incredible empowerment things on how you can take a vision and create something beautiful out of it. And you've already made a difference in 145 orphans lives and i love that you have a bigger goal for 2025 you know 500 children why not why not increase it why not make more of a difference you know baby steps and that but you've already got three out of five done and that's incredible so uh, the vehicle is what i wanted to talk to you because i had seen it on your website about the vehicle and i was like i wonder what the kind of project that is but as you were sharing i understood it now is to get more of the outsource and that. So would these vehicles be in Kenya for outsource or is that part of the outreach in the US? That's, uh, the vehicle, uh, here we are okay because I can use my vehicle for, for like everything that I need to do, but it's in Kenya. So in Kenya right now, um, I'm tempted to show you how my, my kitchen looks with the barrels, um, but they are, the barrels, once they get to Kenya, we have to get means of transportation from Nairobi, which is the capital city, to the village where we are serving the children. And so for now, we have someone who is using like a motorcycle. Oh, okay. Yes, a motorcycle, which is a 45 minutes ride to go and deliver the stuff to the children. So if my hope is that we'll be able to get a vehicle, uh, like a minivan that will be able to help us distribute the, the items that we receive from uh, from um, US and two, as a means of transportation so that when we start teaching other kids and other community, we have a, a, a way to move around. Uh, the third need for the vehicle is once we are growing the, the, once we grow the vegetables, it's kind of difficult to be able to transport them back and forth. So a vehicle is a very integral part into being able to achieve our mission. So are you looking like for a donated vehicle to yes. the foundation or are you looking like for to raise money and then buy a vehicle? Whichever way we are open to, if somebody has an extra vehicle that they can donate, that will be helpful. Uh, alternatively, our budget for the truck will be about 20,000. That's what we have as a budget, 20,000. And that will get us a new vehicle in US, uh, sorry, in, in Kenya for being able to move around. And you mentioned donations in your kitchen. So do the donations come directly to you, Regina, and then you send them? Is that how that works? Yes. And uh, we do. Um, that's a good question. That brings uh, it brings two portions to that when you ask me that question. So right now I'm working through my kitchen. So in my kitchen is my open door office and my storage. And so as we seek grants, we are looking for grants so that we can have a space in Delaware. And that space will be our donation center. It will be also help us with storing the staff so that before we ship them to Kenya and also be our mentorship program here because we want to continue encouraging the kids in here, not just to um, donate their clothes, but they can be engaged in it. So for example, in springtime, we ask the kids to, to clean their closet with your parents, find the clothes they no longer use and donate those clothes. So those are the clothes that I'm receiving. Over time, as we go by the year, people will clean out the clothes they no longer use, the books, and they will donate that. And once they donate, I have that collected by the shipping company from here and shipped to Kenya. So hopefully we'll be able to get a space here. And the space too, we just don't want it to be an office. We would like to replicate the same thing that we have in Kenya. So the same programs we have here, we can have them here so that the kids here can uh, be engaged like summertime. They have activities to do and they will learn from both from each other. So are you looking to outreach your, uh, the foundation like into other countries or is it just U.S. and Kenya right now? So for, for the next, I'll put it this way, for the next uh, five years, uh, starting 2023, our, our focus is to make sure that the Upendo in Nakuru is up and running and the Upendo site in US is up and running. Once we have that situated, it will be easier for us to be able to move to other cities and also counties in Kenya because the goal is to have this project and uh, to be self-sustaining. 
um, the trade school, we envision that to be a semi-private where uh, those who are able to pay can pay and those who are not able to pay will look for donors for them. So with that, we can create streams of income to be able to expand our program to um, other counties. And once we do that, we'll be able to move next country to move is Tanzania. And because I've done several mission trips in Tanzania, I see the need and I know we'll be able to expand to them as well and benefit from what we are doing. Well, it's nice that you know, because you come from that area, right? So you know exactly what is needed. And that's, that's nice. And that that's a head up, right? Because you come from that area. So you know what what needs to be done. Now for the trade schools and that are you looking for teachers to come in from different areas? Or do you have teachers? How's that working? So again, with the trade school, which like I said, it's the major um, project right now. We are breaking that into two portions. The first portion is the building. Uh, once we build, then we can go to to um, Kenya for the approval. We have we cannot get the approvals until we have the building. Once we get the approval, that's the process. Now we'll start hiring the teachers in Kenya. At that point, also. Uh, I did mention we're open to volunteers and interns that can travel to Kenya uh, for service trips to teach. Uh, a good example, we are collaborating with Avi IT. And Avi IT, uh, she's young African-American, still a student, but has her own organization. And Avi teaches computer classes in Kenya every Wednesday. So we are focusing on five adults who she's teaching once she teaches them, then they can be able to spread out and go to schools and also other orphanages in Akuru to teach the kids computer classes. So it's nice that you have that heritage that's staying in, you know. Uh, so if anybody would like to become a volunteer, how does that work, Regina? Uh, on our website, we have a tab for volunteer. They can register there. Um, for now, we're doing both. Uh, local and international. So I have a team that I'm, Avi is part of the team that I'm going with to Kenya. And so when we go to Kenya, she'll help set up the computer lab for the Upendo uh, that we have right now. And also she'll be teaching on how to repair computers on site for those 10 days. So the in five individual, the goal is by the time we leave Kenya in 10 days, they will have learned how to fix a computer. And if they have an issue, they can contact Avi to help them if they have it any challenging so so with any uh, the individuals either here in us that have talents that they can be able to share we are open to that as well so if anybody wanted to take part like i know when i check the website you have different categories that you're looking for volunteers uh the volunteers uh you're looking for administration education the greenhouse the trading school so are, are you looking for people to come in from the U.S. for that? Yes. Yes. Both in U.S. and also in Kenya. If someone, uh, we have people who have talents awesome. as well in Kenya. For example, we have a piano that was donated. So we are looking for somebody who can volunteer to teach the kids comp uh, uh, piano lessons using that. So uh, more, it's not just limited to the formal education, but also, like I said, life and um, career skills. So I want to get into it. Is it Upanda or Uponda? Am I saying it right? Uh, the best way to say it is you, you, if like you, Upendo, Upendo. I say it Upendo, Upendo, it's a Swahili word, or you can say Upendo. A lot of people say Upendo. United Foundation, you can check out the website that is on, on the screen. If you're listening to the audio, check into the description. Everything that you're sharing today will be in the description, so you can read all of that information. You can find uh, Regina on the website as well, um, and you can reach out to her. That, Regina, I, we do have some technical issues, but we're going to continue on. Uh, I hope that you're back and you can hear me. Good. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you, yes. So I want, I, as I was saying before, we got a little glitch from the from some issues here. Uh, is it Upanda or Uponda? Upendo. Upendo. 
See, I'm not even saying it right. My tongue is just all backwards. So you want to say, you can say, oh, okay. Uh, this is how we say, oh, oh, pendo, oh, pendo. Oh, pendo. Oh, pendo. You got I like it. That way. You got it. Oh, pendo. pendo. Yes. I like it. So where did the name come from? And what does so it mean? The name was part of my vision. So once I had the vision, um, maybe that's a to another another topic for the for another day. But once I had the vision at 4 a.m., I woke up and I drew everything on the on my journal. So I see how that that's, that has become my blueprint of the bigger picture of Upendo that I go back to. Uh, but the Upendo was part of the uh, the name. Uh, the only thing I had to took it because there's so many Upendo so that I can still use the name. So it's Upendo United Foundation. And what year did you start the foundation, Regina? It was uh, Upendo was founded on May 7, 2020. So it's pretty much it's two and a half years old. And why that date? That's the date I had the vision. <laughs> That's the day I had the dream. <laughs> so I never forget it. May 7, 2020. And this is the thing, right? We have to hold on to those important dates. You know, sometimes we just, something comes to us and we're like, nope, today's the day. We're going to do it today. You know, I had man. that's the day I had the dream and 4 a.m. It must have been before 4 a.m. But 4 a.m. I woke up and I drew uh, like I drew everything. Every project that's in here is in my journal. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's on my journal. Yes. So for the orphans, how does that work for the orphans? And I do believe I seen something about sponsoring a child for $40 U.S. So how does that? Work? So um, what I did um, and I'll go back. So once I had the vision, um, I started looking for orphans and it didn't take long uh, that I got connected one with one orphanage that I'm literally like, that's who we are supporting right now. Uh, it's called Holy Family Children's Home. And they were so overwhelmed during the COVID, even like with food, clothing, uh, supplies for the children. So I was able to visit uh, the orphanage in December. It was December, sorry, November, 2020. Uh, for the first time and i realized a good example will be they were not using like diapers so they were using um the old kind of diapers which is like a piece of towel and what caught my attention is to see although there were like 40 50 orphans the the little ones those nappies did not have a name for any child and so the first thing that rang in my mind is we have so many diapers in this country, so many, so that these children don't don't deserve to be using those pieces of old clothes um, that, number one, for hygiene purposes. And two, since like, these are children who've been um, either somewhat in peak latrine, somewhat literally dug on the ground that they don't deserve so that started my when i came back uh, my message of asking people to donate diapers so the good thing is for the last two years we are able to ship per month like per year we've been able to ship ten thousand diapers which supports them uh -huh. that's amazing that so really and the amazing. same thing with the food instead of just asking for the money the money we put it back and grow the food so we have organic food that we are supplying. So that's very important for me to be able not to just feed them with any kind of food, but to feed them with healthy food. So uh, like I mentioned, the goat milk is part of what we are feeding them. The eggs, the vegetables and fruits that are all organic is what we are feeding them. And not just feeding them, but also showing them in future, they know how to grow them, to grow their own food. When you said that you use the rabbits for the urine, do you guys also eat the rabbits or you just use them mainly for that? For now, we are using the rabbits specifically to collect to harvest urine. And also the second portion of that, we want to teach the local community the use of the, um, I say a good example, like my mom, uh, her land does not produce the way it should produce because over time they've been taught about fertilizers and chemicals. And so the, the, the lands are depleted. So my goal is to continue expanding into the community and teaching them the use of, uh, of the urine, the rabbit, as a fertilizer and as insecticide. And we're already doing that to local. We've already like imparted that to a few farmers 
who are learning from that. So we hope to be able, using the apps, to be able to teach more on the use of that. So for now, we are not using rabbits for, uh, for meat. We are strictly using them for breeding so that we can be able to sell extra to somebody who needs them and also for uh, fertilizers and insecticide. So we, we have a couple questions that are coming in, Regina. So I want to ask those questions to you. Uh, we, ha we have a question here. Are you accepting seeds for fruits and vegetables, the plant? Yes. And uh, that's a tricky question, but literally, I, I take the seeds from, uh, I get them from laws, the organic ones uh, for beetroots, for the vegetables. That's where I get them from, including the meat and rosemary. So I get them from uh, laws, the organic kind. So the organic, healthy product is what you're looking for, correct? Yes. Okay, now we have another question here that's asking, how, how did you learn about the rabbits and the urine as a, a fertilizer? Uh, that, sorry? How did you learn that the urine was good for fertilization? <laughs> uh, so the beauty of being a visionary of this uh, project is I think within those two and a half years, I've graduated with several degrees. So I go into details of everything that we are, we, like for example, why are we planting this specific vegetable? Where are we planting this herb? And so it's out of that that I learned about the rabbits. So we, we when I started, we were buying urine um, to for use. But now we, we at a level, uh, let me go back. So in June, I was able to put our first rabbits. Uh, we are keeping the uh, California Flemish. So we bought, because of the cost, we bought three. But over time, they have they are multiplying. So the goal is to continue doing that and to increase the urine so that we are supplying to local farmers and other individuals. And if they want to buy the rabbit to start their own farm, they can buy that and also learn from us. Awesome. And so I'll be reading have, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I learned something new because I didn't know that you could do that. So yeah. I learned something. And that's what I love is I love learning from my guests, right? Yes. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, and I know you haven't asked me that, but the goat. So the goat milk, I personally had a lot of allergies. And I learned that from the book called uh, The Brain Maker about the benefits of the goat milk. And so for four years, I stopped using the cow milk and I use only the goat milk. And so I know all the benefits of the goat milk, including um, making uh, kefir, uh, making soap from there, and making cheese. So as we increase our production or, and we increase uh, the number of goats we have, that's the, the goal, that the hope that we'll be able to have more byproducts for the goat milk. I never even thought of that, the soap. So do, the goat soap? Part of the goat trade? soap? Yeah. So is that <laughs> going to be part of the trade? Like how to teach how to make soaps and stuff like Correct. that as well. So that will be the part of that will be part of the trainings that we are doing. So how to take care of a goat, um, what to feed it, and if they are able to get the milk, how to, to they can make their own soap. They can make kefir, which is a very good anti. Um, I don't know how I can tell it to remove toxins from your stop. It, it's all uh, toxins microbiome is it, all into that and I don't want to get into that, but it's supposed to be very he healthy and very uh, good for human beings. So same thing for the babies, the milk is much better for them than the cow milk. So we just want to give them, the, my, my hope and desire is to feed these children with the best that we can. So we have a question here about the $40 a month. What does that give you if you sponsor a child for $40? So the forty dollars literally takes care of food, clothing, shelter, and medical need. So if uh, and one of the things I have the names of the children, you can choose. At this point, we haven't reached to that level, but once I'm able to get enough, like we have a hundred and forty-five orphans. If I get individual donors who are supporting those children, then we can be able to identify each person with a child. But for now, because we don't have that much donor, so the $40 goes into bulk and the need, if it's the school fees that we need right now, that's what we are taking care of. Well, that, and, and that's yeah. good information to know as well because yes. it's building blocks, right? It's building, it's building blocks. And another way to put it is um, uh, one, again, I ask people to donate 
we have a lot of quarters laying around, quarters, pennies. So if you think about it, six quarters will feed one child per day. So I ask people, you can go look all the quarters, the coins laying down in your house, um, take them to uh, convert them and donate them, and that will feed. You find people will have like $40, $136, and that will feed two months or a couple months for the children. So I do accept the coins. Uh, the coins, that's another story for another day. <laughs> No, and I like that because it's yeah. it shows that the little makes a big result, right? And I say yes, this all the time. A quarter all and uh, one dollar, right? yeah, one dollar and fifty cents will feed one child per day, and that includes their fees, their school fees. Oh wow! Yeah, include their school fees. No, see, yeah. for six quarters you can change someone's life. See, correct. Six quarters will change someone's life. And I, even I when you're like talking to the children, showing because I like showing the the children we have here how to give and serve, that's an easier way to show them. Clean the house and find six quarters you can find or pennies, let's count them, and six quarters will feed one child. So they start seeing they don't have to have so much money to sub, to make a difference. Yes. And I love that, Regina, because I always say that, right? Little little things lead to big results. You know, yes. we always think that it's always got to be the big donations and the big, it's the little donations that go it's the little way. Yes, yes. Yes. So uh, I want to get into the love, serve, give, and what's the last word? And connect. And, and connect. connect. Yes. Uh, so why those four? And what so do they mean So just like a house, right? Just like a house, you have to have four pillars that, that holds the foundation of the house. So Upendo, those are the four foundations of, uh, of Upendo. And so love is simple. It's love is Upendo. So, and it's the greatest commandment. So if nothing else, you can have, you don't have money, you don't have anything to give. You can pray for the children. You can send blessings for them every day. So I believe in just being able to love. Um, and to me, it's like a form of prayer. You're sending them love. You're sending them blessings. Not necessarily money, not necessarily material. So that's the first thing. The second thing is give. And when it comes to give, I don't just believe in money because there's so much ways we can give. You have a talent that you can give. You have a skill you can give. Uh, you have your time. I, I say those kids, when you go to Kenya, they yearn for a hug, just being held. When you hold the child here, when you leave, when you want to keep the child, they cry. Like, and I try to make sure I hold a child, but you realize they long for that human touch. So for the team that I'll be going to Kenya with, I already let them know that's part of what we're going to do. Just hold the baby. That's it. Hold each baby. And uh, they can give clothes. They can give books. They can give money. They can give their time. Uh, there's so much ways to give. They can give, like, if you have a skill, they can do that. And then the second one is serve. So there are different ways of serving. Uh, if you're in Kenya, they can help us in the farm. They can help us with the library. They can help us. Like now we're starting the school. They can help us um, in person, coming in and helping us with the building. Uh, from here, um, there are different ways. Since we don't have much funding, like you can see, we are baby. We're still a baby. If you have skills, like computer skills, uh, accounting skills, uh, marketing skills, uh, you can use those ones to serve or kind of. And the last one is connect. And a good way I can say is like how we connected with you. I did not know you, but through somebody who had Upendo story connected me with you. So I believe uh, connection is one of my favorite portion because then it goes, it has that ripple effect. Uh, you get more people to hear about the story of Upendo, the story of just one specific child, and we can same thing like we're talking about the vehicle. Maybe somebody is has that extra cash, five thousand, to help us buy the vehicle, but they know somebody who is willing to do it. So I believe in connection. So those are the four pillars of Upendo: give, and love, I, I, serve, and connect. Yes. And I really love that, Regina, because the connection is like like you said, we were connected. I. I I don't know Regina, and she was sent to me, and she was actually sent to me by Jacqueline Zicoli from Networks Build Networks Builders Arizona. Check them out as well. Jacqueline is doing amazing work. She has brought me a couple of beautiful ladies that you will see on Tea Time this year in 2023. Uh, 
there are incredible, incredible people out there that are doing a difference. And Regina, you're one of them. So I want to really thank you for your service in that. So now I want to get into, if I ask you, what is your tea? What would your tea be today? So I think, and that will evolve over time. But for today, for 2023, my tea stands for tea is for the trade school. Because that's what we are focusing on. And the trade school has the, the potential to impart career and life skills to, to children. And um, the beauty of it is as we build the trade school, um, we talked about love. So one of the walls, just like my backyard, will have the hearts of every donor who's participated in this project. So that's my, my, my uh, first tip. <laughs> the second one is empowerment. Empowerment. So I believe our motto is empowering a generation, one child at a time. Empowering a generation, one child at a time through education, training, and mentorship. I, I really, really love that. And the last one is A is for agriculture. So my heart breaks to see so many people uh, sleeping without food in Kenya. And I realized just uh, going back is if we go back to the basics, uh, we have a small farm, we can use the urine, we can use the waste from the goat, we can use the compost, the, the eggshell, another from the egg. That if you see the like our vegetables just out of that, they grow up so good. So nobody should sleep hungry in Kenya when we know this. So Agriculture is a huge part because I know people have land. It's only that how can we be able to make a difference in those lands so that there's more production and there's more food for everybody. Uh, so it's the agriculture stands for both the vegetables, the fruits and the herbs, and then also for rearing of animals, whether whichever specific, but for me, it's goats, chicken and rabbits. <laughs> so are you looking for any other animals out there? Yeah. Well, you know, we have right now we have five uh, goats. We we'll like to go to fifty. Uh, the cost of one goat, the one we get, is two hundred and fifty. Um, so I, at the moment, um, and that's not something we talked about, but I want to share about it. Um, we did not have water at our site, so someone donated four hundred dollars on January 1st. And so as we speak, I'm gonna have that on my website soon or on my social media, it's there cause it's ongoing right now. So we are manually digging a, a borehole so that what we can get water from there to be able to grow. So water has been one of the huge, uh, you know, like uh, challenges, but we are hoping with our $400, we'll be able to have more water to grow and we can be able to expand uh, from that. Um, with the rabbits, again, now that if we have water, we can be able to have more animals. We can be able to supply more uh, of what we're doing. But a cost of goat is 250. Uh, the On the construction, I want to break it down, like $150 will buy a track of uh, building materials, 150. Uh, right now we, we need, just for the foundation, for the first block, which is like the hall, we need about 50,000 US dollars. So I'm going blocks by blocks. We have about 8,000 so far, but every dollar counts, whether it's 25, $25 will build a hundred foot of the trade school. So every penny counts, every penny counts towards something. Yeah. And and, and I like that you're, you're putting the building blocks, you know, and yes. you're saying that every, every little bit does make a difference. You know, it does. You can, it does. It does. So, if anybody wanted to donate rabbits or goats or anything like that, could they do that? Yes. Yes. So, and we get the fun part about it. If you donate uh, the rabbits that we are buying, I, I see it's the California Flemish. Uh, it goes up to eight pounds. They are fifty dollars. Um, let me put it. I always have to think about the Kenyan shillings and the, the U.S. dollars. So, it's about fifty dollars for the uh, California Flemish giant. And then for the goats, it's 250. Uh, we're strictly doing the token bag that has token bag. And um, I have to remember the other one, the, the name, I, it's getting off my mind, but it's two kinds that has more milk, produces more milk. 
and um, the, it's much easier product, like taking care of them is much easier. So those are the two that we are targeting. Um, we do not need more chicken because they are breeding so fast. <laughs> And it's they get the eggs and the eggs we are putting them back. So uh, eventually, what we we'll need is additional land to be able to expand. But for now, we are working from a quarter, like a half. It's not. It's a half an acre that I donated, and that's where we are doing the school, the livestock, the library. Uh, everything is in that like quarter of a, uh, a half an acre of land. So Regina, you donated all of this money out of your own personal pocket to have this started? Uh, I'll see a good portion, like the land I donated, I donated the greenhouse. So it's a lot of my like out of pocket uh, uh, money to see this vision come true. Uh, and that's how much I believe in this vision. Cause I know coming from Kenya, um, I, <laughs> so coming from Kenya, yes. I came with my son strapped on my back. And I had a hundred dollars. And looking back 20 years uh, today, uh, my son is graduated. He was able to go get a full scholarship at Mount St. Mary's. And then my daughter works in New York. She has a, she's already graduated and has a job. And so I look back and I say, uh, what can I do to make a difference uh, to somebody else who is in Kenya? And so uh, pretty much for those two and a half years, it's been me feeding into Upendo, feeding into Upendo so that we can make a difference for those orphans. And I and I think people need to hear this, right? We need to hear the passion and the purpose behind it. You know, a, you come from Kenya, so you know you know what it is to live there. And like you said, you're you're grateful for being in the in the US and that and being yes. able to give oh, you yes. scholar, you know. Yeah. And I think that's what we need to do. We need to bring that message out to the world is that we can make a difference even once we leave our countries or we leave our homes, you know? We can say, okay, I got established here. I got ahead. How can I help the people back home? How can I help my family back home, you know, yes. or a friend? And it's like you said, the little things matter. The little yes. donations lead to the big results, right? So I want, for all the listeners and viewers out there, if you'd like to know more, even a little donation, like six quarters, go into your change jar, you know, and a, cu a cup of coffee is more than a dollar fifty nowadays. So, you know, let, let, let's let just start giving a little bit. Give a little and it'll make a big difference. And you'll have an update from me, Miss Liz, uh, on how the foundation is going and how much we're changing and making a difference. So I want to get into some of your stuff now. Virginia. When I asked the guests to be on Tea Time, I asked you guys what your favorite color is. And you gave me the fav you get gave me the color red. So what does red mean to you? <laughs> uh, it's interesting. Uh it I don't know, it doesn't mean much to me, but the black, red, and white, um uh, the the red, I just believe it's power. It's like empowering, power, empowering. And then white is peace. And um, black has no meaning. It was easier for us to print materials. Uh, when we do printing of materials, it's easier to do with two colors. So white is already the paper. So the alternate was black. <laughs> but I love I love the so, black, red, and white now. Yes, yes. <laughs> and how did the logo come about? Oh, that's another story. I, I opened on, like, I, I didn't realize we have material for one hour, but once I had uh, the vision, um, uh, if you allow me, I have to show the logo. Is that okay? Oh, yes, for sure. This is your time. This is your tea time. So for anybody that would like to know more on, on the... Um, so that's there the we logo. go. That's the beautiful logo. I love that. And so what happened with the logo, uh, it, as you can see, you is shaped as... Uh, you is shaped as a basket and we have little children growing into stronger children um, because people are pouring love love into this basket so and then what we are doing as a community is building solid foundation for these children but with that i want to say it came about um three months after i had the vision I had a friend of mine, her name is Susan. 
And uh, it's interesting because I'm meeting with her tonight. But Susan um, called me three months after. That was around August. And she said, Regina, I had a dream. Two, uh, two I dreamt two times with you. And she said, you're holding a basket and you're wearing an African dress. And um, she said, people were lined up and were pouring into your basket. And some were asking you to pick what you want from the basket. And some were pouring everything they had into their basket. So that to me uh, was very important because at that time, three months down, I was still doubting. Is it vision true? Is it true I had this vision? But once she shared that, it was like a confirmation. Uh, again, God has people, if you want to call it God, universe, however you want to call it, has people lined up to support this project. So my prayer and my um, desire always is like through the connection that there are people who are aligned to support this cause. There are people lined up to pour their love into this basket. That's how the logo yeah, I never even about. noticed that. Like when, when you sent me the logo, I never even noticed that you. Yes. It shapes as, as a you, it, like as, as a basket. basket. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I love that. And, I, and, the, and the hearts, the hearts represent the love. People are pouring love. That's all we are trying. That's what I was saying. Love. They bring that, um, like it's the biggest commandment uh, we are spreading. If uh, we can just spread a little love, just a little, like that, a quarter and a half or just a little love, it will make a huge difference. And uh, it's my desire as we continue to serve the 145 that the impact that we are making one child at a time that we'll be able to eradicate orphanages in Kenya because we pull them and they can pull somebody else. So uh, yes, that's love that we are pouring that will make the difference. And I love that you say one child at a time because that's one child what at it a is, time. Right? Yes. Yes, you yes. know, we have to do it one step at a time, one building yes. block at a time. And and that's what I got from this tea time is that you're you're taking one step at a time and step, you're not yes. just jumping in and going boof, you know, like no, a lot of people no. will uh, will start something and they'll start all at once where yes. you're building the blocks and the steps to get through. It. I like, yeah. And actually, uh, today, because I'm huge on mentorship, I had a young uh, individual here in the house. And the good thing I could show him the total budget for Upendo is 1.5 million. But guess what? We took the library, we upcycled a shipping container, and now it's a library that we are serving there. Then once we finished that project, we went to the greenhouse. So we have one greenhouse. The goal is to have three eventually so that we can have for use and export. But we have one, and with that one, every week we are feeding these children. Uh, the livestock, we did, we do not have the 50 goats that we wanted, but we have five right now that we have with the hope we'll be able to expand so, so that we can be able to maximize that line of the goats. And so it's just one step at a time, one step at a time, uh, one day at a time. Well, it's almost like weaving in a basket, right? You need to weave it one weave at a time, like, you know, like you could build that. And I really like that you explained the logo because now I understand what the big, I, for me, I seen a tree and I seen the roots and the connections in that. So I want to thank you for sharing that and, and sharing that with the audience as well about how the logo came together and yes. the basket. I love the basket. Yes. You know, it's yes. like putting a food basket, like how much food can you put in a basket? You know, uh, yes. so if anybody, so if anybody wanted to reach out to you, Regina, besides the website, where could they reach you? Yeah, I'm open. My, my phone number is 302-510. 2049 again 302 510 2049 and any final words that you'd like to share before we wrap up your tea time uh, <laughs> just um yes what i would like to share is instead of giving these children a fish we are showing them how to fish and we all have something in our hand that we can make a difference in these children's life. So we are showing them how to fish, not just giving them a fish. And each one of us have something in their hand that they can be able to share. I like that. And I like that you're teaching. And I think that's where the empowerment comes in. 
and the education is Perfect. we're not just giving you all of this stuff. We're making you actually understand and learn how to do it so you can continue on. Correct. 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 So I want to I want to thank you again for joining me on Tea Time, and I want to thank all the viewers and listeners out there. We have a couple minutes left, so we're going to just hit into a couple final little things. And I want to thank Jacqueline Sukhoi, again, Network Building Arizona. Check them out. She is an incredible lady. She has connected with me, and we are. she is partnered up with me, so we're going to have some incredible tea times coming. We also have one more tea time coming tonight at 7 p.m. with Dr. Betty Speaks, who will be speaking about changing your life now and empowerment, human rights, all of that good stuff. So it's going to be a really strong tea again. Now I want to go back to your tea because you served a strong tea. So your tea is trade schools, empowerment, and agriculture. I want to thank you for sharing that. And I want to thank you for bringing that awareness for agriculture. And that is the first A agriculture I've had served to me. So I want to thank everyone for tuning in and that, and make sure to share these tea times. You just never know what difference you can make, what connection you can make. It only takes two seconds to click a share button, you know, and ask questions, reach out. And if you'd like more information and you can't reach Regina, you can always reach me, Miss Liz, and I can read further message to her. We are connected now, so there, she's not going anywhere. She's going to be around. She's going to be stuck with Miss Liz for a while. So I want to thank everyone for tuning in. But Re Regina, before we leave, I want you to share your tea again and a little deeper into why those three words. Yes, the tea is for the trade school. Uh, and that's our goal for the next three years, starting with 2023, the foundation. Um, actually, if somebody is interested, we'll be taking a trip in the next few weeks uh, to go groundbreaking for the trade school. Uh, in this trade school, the goal is to impart career and life skills. Um, it will be an innovation hub where kids can come and be innovative. Let them come, let them be who they were created to be. And the second, uh, the A is for empowerment. And again, just like we have, we all have something that we can be able to share uh, through education, through training, through mentorship. So let's take advantage of those skills talents, uh, passions that we have to make a difference. And then the agriculture, we don't have to have a big farm. So we can have a little farm that we're making a big difference uh, to eradicate poverty uh, by uh, doing organic farming and using an ecosystem that's good, not just for the children that we are serving, but for the environment. So with that, I'll be more than happy as well to you know share more about the rabbits the goats, the chicken. And then for the uh, plants, we have right now different kind of vegetables. We have strawberries and uh, we have herbs. We are hoping once we get additional land, we'll be able to have a, like a farm that's full of trees, but the trees that have fruits uh, to continue uh, saving or caring for our environment. Uh, lastly, for individuals who are here in US, do not, uh, put your books, your shoes, and uh, stuff that you may think that are not important in the, uh, in the trash, uh, because some of those items means a whole lot to the children in Kenya. So again, my phone number and my email is available. If you have items and extreme in the East Coast, we'll be able to get those items to ship them in Kenya. Well, again, thank you so much. I really appreciate everything you're doing. And thank you for supporting 145 orphans. Let's get her to 500 by 2025. You know, we all can make a difference when we all just step up. And $40 a month, you can you you can spend that $40 and make a difference on someone's life. Before we wrap up, Virginia, I do want to ask you this question. What age group are you working with? So right now we have zero. So meaning the children who are born and somebody abandons them, puts them in a latrine from zero to 24. The oldest we have is Modoni, who is 24, and she's in uh, eight, 10th grade. Awesome. Well, thank you again. And thank you to all the listeners and viewers out there. And we will see you guys all back at 7 p.m. for the last <clears throat> tea time for this Thursday. And then starting again next week, we bring back three more guests. This is how we're working this year for 2023 with Miss Liz. And if you'd like to know more about Miss Liz, check out my website at www.misslizsteaparties.com. That's right. Tea parties, not tea time. 
And there's a reason behind that because that's what Miss Liz was doing before she went virtual. So if you'd like to know more about that, check that out. And also check out Regina and all of her incredible work. You can find her on the website and you can make a difference with six quarters. Let's send six quarters. Let's all start getting into our little piggy banks and picking out six quarters and making a difference and sending it to Regina. And all the information is on the website so you can send it directly to her. And let's just keep it moving. Let's just keep this tea time flowing and I want to thank you again for sharing a good, strong TEA today with me in Tea Time with Miss Liz. So I will see everybody at 7 p.m. for the final show with Dr. Betty Speaks. And we will be talking about some incredible things as well. So grab your teas for 7 p.m. Miss Liz is going to go and grab some to eat and then I'll be right back at 7. So again, thank you, Regina, and have an incredible day.